just under a year ago, I was lucky enough to drive some pre-production Ineos Grenadiers over in Scotland. And I came away so impressed. I said, and I stand by it, that they are the most capable out of the box four wheel drive for sale today. But what I didn't know was how well they could tow. The specs look amazing. So we finally have our chance. We've got four Grenadiers, both petrol and diesel, and two caravans. The Jayco behind me, which we picked up in Brisbane, and a fantastic Wonderland, which we've already towed all the way from Melbourne. Now we're on Rainbow Beach, and we're about to head inland, where we are gonna find out how well these will tow into the hot center. Along for the almost 4,000 K journey, we have four Enios Grenadier, one Field Master and three Trial Masters, and interestingly, one petrol and three diesels. Now, all of them have VIN numbers indicating they are within the first 3,000 built. Now, before we pop the bonnet and talk some specs, I want to run you through some of the external options that I think are really important for Australian buyers. This petrol trial master has had almost the entire option book thrown at it, and I think it was a good choice by this buyer. It has a bull bar, for me a must have if you're doing any late day driving. An integrated winch, which is beautifully tucked well inside that bull bar, rated to 5,500 kilos. I think these things are important for recoveries for yourself, but also handy if you do get your trailer stuck in sand. Raised intake, really important on dusty road driving. And this one has a full length Rhino rack platform, which if you do go full length, it does mean you can't have one of my favorite other options, the Safari roof. But now for any new order, you can get a slightly shorter platform, allowing you to have the Safari windows, which I'll show you on this car. Not seen on the petrol are the Safari windows, one of my favorite options. They are just tons of fun, plus on a hot day, they'll help expel a lot of hot air. Now you can't have these if you get a full length rack, like seen on the petrol, but for any new orders, you can get a three quarter rack, allowing you to have both. Now you'll also notice steel wheels, now they're standard. Really like them and I would keep them. Now if you get a trial master like this car, you'll also get the KO2 tires. These things have been fantastic for the first few days and I expect them to be that way for the rest. Now the last option I like on this one, rock sliders. Now the factory side steps are really good. If you're a bit mobility impaired or a bit shorter, very handy to get in and out. But the rock sliders, if you're doing serious off-road work, these will protect your sills. Let's get inside. For as industrial or utilitarian as the Ineos Grenadier looks outside, the inside is remarkably comfortable, luxurious, and well-built. Now, there are a few options on this one I wanna point out. Leather seats, and probably one of my favorites, this brown saddle leather steering wheel. It just feels like quality in your hand. Now, in terms of other bits that really stand out to me, the twin horns, everyone's gonna love that. It's a slightly muted horn for just giving somebody a little hurry up or letting a, a cyclist know that you're gonna pass them. The other one is, is in the infotainment system, you have an off-road function. And within the off-road function, you can see your engine, gearbox, transfer case temperatures independently of each other, as well as your tire pressure, and importantly for us, that tow, tire temperature. The switch gear is amazing. It's all easy to grab, and these small aluminum sort of I suppose you'd call them stays, just mean that you can get your hands around things and hold onto them on really bumpy environments. It's a very well thought out interior, but it still oozes class. Now, before we get towing again, let's just have a quick look under the bonnets. So, like uh, pretty much every modern car, there's not a lot to look at under the bonnet. It's a lot of engine covers. Now, this is a three liter inline diesel turbo six cylinder source from BMW, it is the B57 engine code. Now this is tuned to 183 kilowatts and 550 newton meters. So it's not exactly the most that you can buy right now, but it's been tuned for a very flat curve of torque, which is really important for towing, really important for performance. But most importantly, what's behind this engine is what I think probably is the best gearbox for sale right now or available right now in the ZF8 speed. It just makes this thing drive absolutely fantastically. It is smooth as butter. And this is the petrol. Like the diesel, not a lot to look at, just a lot of plastic covers. But also like the diesel, BMW sourced inline three liter turbo. This one petrol, obviously. Now it makes a bit more power at 210 kilowatt and a little less torque at 450 newton meters as you'd expect from a petrol. 
It also has a wider power band, so it feels a bit more sprightly and a bit more pokey, and it's really nice and smooth and refined. Is it a better towing engine? The jury's out. We'll find out at the end of the test. I needed some help getting the four Grenadiers and two trailers into the centre. Luckily for me, Tom from Ineos Australia and New Zealand had the time and his enthusiasm and product knowledge helped immensely. And I needed someone with experience towing a big van like the impressive 1907. Step up Aaron, Steph, Little Wes and adorable Georgie from Lost Tribe Adventures. The family is living the dream on the road with their own Wonderland and well set up 76 series Land Cruiser. For this test we have two very different caravans. We've got the Wonderland 1907 XTR which represents the peak of off-road caravans with a massive 650mm high truss chassis and then the Jayco Crosstrack, which is an exceptionally popular, if not one of Australia's best-selling small caravans. Now, why we chose these is because of their bulk and weight differences. The XTR comes in at 3,500 kilos ATM, and for us, towed at about three ton. And then the Crosstrack comes in at about 1,400 kilos tier and around 2,000 kilos ATM. Now, we towed this one at about 1,500, 1,600 once fully loaded they have a hugely different footprint through the air as well. So I expect from a fuel consumption, we'll see some very different numbers for buyers of a more typical van and buyers for a peak van. So Aaron, pretty much ended the trip for you guys. I still got to get back to Melbourne, but I towed the big dog up with this petrol mm. Grenadier. Now, I was pretty impressed by it, to be honest with you. I've towed a lot of vans that size with Rams, yep. um, even the F-150 recently, but um, GM a lot. And the big American trucks tend to be the more fuel efficient from a petrol point of view, normally yep. about the 30s for something like that, and maybe the 28s yep. for some of the new ones. I saw 26s in this, yep. and we hauled ass. 2000 yep. Ks, Melbourne to Brisbane. We were just on a date to meet you guys. Yep. You've had the most time with the diesel. Yeah. What'd you get? Mid 21s, like in the headwind and stuff like that, it can push up to that 26 give or take um, depending on how much wet and wind you got and it depends on the speed but realistically if i'm doing the same speed as my 76 back at home and that's that 87 magic number i reckon you'll get sub 18 liters per 100 in this mm. to give it a fair real world sort yeah. of um result yeah which a lot of caravanners do they especially full time it's like fuel is one of the biggest costs on the road and i think like if you're traveling at that sort of speed that's where this one's going to save you money as well because it's going to be better than that 18 litres per 100, which yeah. I reckon is like on point. Yeah. So that works out 250 to 300 k's per tank on that, but that's closer to 450 with a 90 litre tank in this guy. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually pretty reasonable. Now I had, to, I did get a drive of the other diesel we've got with us. Yep. I did a run from Wilcania and I saw higher 20s yep. into that real nasty headwind. Yeah. 35 which is, degree day. Yeah. Yeah, I saw mid 20s in that one. I do have to make the call. I'd go the diesel if time big dog. I'm with you. Yeah, diesel all the way. With that size van, I think it's the only way to go. Cool, bit of a surprise. Petrol, Jayco, I saw as much as 24 litres per 100, and diesel Jayco, as much as 22. Big caveat on that though, that was towing into some pretty severe headwinds, 35 degree ambient air temperatures at 110. Now, I expect you get a lot better than that, and I did see a lot better than that. I saw mid-teens with diesel, and I saw very early 20s and late teens with petrol. The big difference is feel though, quieter, smoother, and definitely a lot more top-end power from the petrol, whereas the diesel, a lot talkier. When you're pulling out of sort of like some traffic lights and things around town, this felt a lot more responsive. If I was towing a lot, I'd take the diesel. If I was 70, 30, around town, 30% towing, I'd take the petrol straight for the performance. It's pretty exceptional. Options wise, I ran you through them before what I like, but this is pretty much it. I'd go the full roof rack, get the recovery boards on there, get rid of the side steps and go thrash it. So Aaron from the Lost Tribes and I were talking while driving the other day about how comfortable we found the Grenadier and I just want to explain why. So the team have gone with Recaro, arguably the best seat maker in the world for the seats in all of them. You can have leather like this vehicle is fitted or you can have some fabric. 
There's also a lot of headroom in it, and it's quite an upright vehicle, as you can see from the outside. So you've got a very vertical windscreen, which honestly, visibility, fantastic. There is a lot of adjustability in the seat. If you're a big person like me, you'll have it all the way back. And for the kids, the back has stadium seating, so it's slightly elevated. So like Aaron's team, if they're in the back, they sit a little higher, they can see through the windscreen. Now yesterday, we got this car and the other, other cars on the trip with us up on top of one of the Nalia hills and tracks at LD Station. And we finally got to use differential locks, low range, and these things are exceptional off-road. Like, out of the box, probably the best 4x4 for sale in Australia right now. We did use first gear, low range, everything locked, just doing a few climbs up onto a few rocks for a few photos. Otherwise, in drive, in high range, with a center diff locked, these things were absolutely fantastic. On dirt tracks, on the sand, really easy to drive. Intuitive, felt safe, felt planted, lots and lots of grip. So in the back of the Grenadier, there is a lot of space for cargo. Now the utility rails are an option and so is the cargo barrier, but standard is a 12 volt cigarette point. So you can put a fridge in here easily and tethers and ISO fixes for child seats. But the real reason I wanted to point this out is because of the over 850 kilo payload available on certain models that this car can have. Now that is super impressive for a coil sprung SUV. Part of the reason why the Grenadier is so capable off-road is its underpinnings. Now it rides on Carrera solid axles with a 220 mm crown wheel, Dana unis and Brembo brakes on the outside. Now the chassis has a 12 year corrosion warranty. It starts off galvanized, it's then powder coated and it is wax filled. Now the undersides of this are very close to flat bottomed. It's very smooth under there. When we were out in the rocks yesterday, we had no problems. It also has rated recovery points, and one of my favorite details is that the bull bar or the standard front bumper is basically Lego for adults. You can bolt on a bull bar probably 12 minutes yourself or replace end caps at home with a couple of tools. Early in 2023, I was lucky enough to drive some of the very first Ineos Grenadier over in Scotland but unfortunately we weren't towing. So it left me wondering, what can these do with things like these in the outback of Australia? Now we started our trip 12 days ago down in Melbourne where we picked up the Wonderland. We set sail for Brisbane, drove the beaches on the north side of Noosa before coming inland to here an LD station. Now what we learned is that fuel consumption was perhaps a bit higher than expected, but the overall performance, the towing capacity and the specs, they are all proven. We had no trouble in the heat. We had no trouble in the tight, twisty tracks around LD. These things towed fantastically. 